This video will discuss spin-orbit coupling in the angular momentum of electrons. So we discussed in the earlier video on the Zeeman effect, we have a magnetic moment of the L operator, which was equal to negative charge of the electron over two times mass of the electron times the angular momentum vector. So our magnetic dipole based off of our orbital angular momentum of the electron in its atomic orbital. We have the angular momentum squared operator, or shall I say orbital angular momentum squared, L squared, acting on psi n l m sub l. m sub l is now noted because we're going to have spin angular momentum as well. That equals h bar squared l times l plus 1 times psi n l m sub l. So psi is a, our atomic orbitals, our eigenfunctions of L squared with an eigenvalue of h bar squared L times L plus 1. And we have the absolute value of this angular momentum vector is thus going to be uh, the square root of that. So our magnetic moment from this is going to be minus E h bar over 2 times mass of the electron times the square root of L times L plus 1. Note that from the Zeeman effect video, the Bohr magneton beta B equals E h bar over 2 times mass of the electron. So our magnetic dipole moment from angular orbital angular momentum is going to be negative Bohr magneton times L times L plus 1. All right, so that's the magnitude of it. Uh, what about for our spin angular momentum? So this is from orbital angular momentum. You can imagine that as the particle rotating around the z-axis. But the spin angular momentum, you can imagine that like the particle rotating around itself. So orbital angular momentum is like the Earth going around the sun. Spin angular momentum is like the Earth spinning around its axis. So we have to account for the fact that not only is it spinning around this axis, around an axis, but it's spinning around itself as well. Electron spin doesn't exactly work that way, but that's the analogy that we can use to think about it. So we would get a magnetic dipole moment vector from the spin angular momentum as well, and that's equal to negative g times the charge of the electron over 2 times mass of the electron times the spin angular momentum vector. This factor g is just equal to 2, that's called the anomalous spin factor. You, for some reason, get an extra factor of two in this magnetic dipole moment relative to this one. So similarly, we have, uh, it is an eigenfunction of the S squared operator. So absolute magnitude of M sub S is negative G Bohr magneton beta times S times S plus one. S for an electron is one half. Remember the value of L for an electron in an orbital goes from is an integer going from 0 to n for a given principal quantum number. So the z component of this orbital of the spin angular momentum is equal to negative g charge of the electron s sub z times 2 times over 2 times mass of the electron z component of the spin angular momentum which is just h bar times m sub s, which we saw from the previous video on electron spin, negative g e h bar m sub s over 2 times mass of the electron. This is equal to negative g times m sub s times beta b, or equal to, equal to plus or minus beta b. g is 2, m sub s is plus or minus 1 half, so we get plus or minus beta b for the z component of our spin angular momentum. All right, so we got these two angular momentum, angular momenta going on here. Uh, how does this affect our Hamiltonian if we have some kind of uh, magnetic field? So we have our Hamiltonian is equal to kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over two times mass of electron del squared, the Laplacian operator potential energy from the Coulomb potential minus E squared over four pi epsilon naught R, distance of the electron from the proton. And then we add plus a spin orbit interaction term. So we have our angular momentum from our orbital angular momentum from up here, 
we have our angular momentum from the spin angular momentum down here. So orbiting around the axis and spinning around itself. And this is some unspecified term which we're not going to mess with further. Basically this whole video to this point, the whole point of it is discussing what we need to do to discuss the quantum number J. So J represents the total angular momentum. L squared is the orbital angular momentum squared. S is the spin angular momentum squared. J is the total angular momentum once we have accounted for orbit and spin. So J, the operator J squared acting on a state J M sub J, just like the S squared operator, just like the L squared operator is going to be H bar squared J times J plus one acting on that same state. So the, and it also has a Z component, J sub Z is J M sub J acting on J M sub J equals H bar M sub J J M sub J, just like L sub Z, just like L sub S. So these three angular momenta to summarize, L is the orbital angular momentum, S is the spin angular momentum, those two combine to give the total angular momentum. M sub S for an electron is plus or minus one half, two possible states. M sub L equals zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, etc., all the way up to plus or minus L. That gives two L plus one states for a given value of L. M sub J is going to give two times two L plus one states. The two spin states and the two and the two L plus one orbit states combined uh, to give the product of the result. All right, so what values of J can we have for given values of S and L? Well, J is every integer or half integer going from the absolute value of L plus S down to the absolute value of L minus S. And then M sub J is an integer going from minus J up to J. So we'll do some examples here. So if L equals zero and S orbital, uh, we're going to have j equals one half because s is one half. Zero plus one half, zero minus one half is both one half in absolute magnitude. So m sub j is going to equal plus or minus one half for an electron in an s orbital. For an electron in a p orbital, l equals one. M, uh, j is going to be three halves and one half. L plus one half, l minus, sorry, one plus one half, one minus one half. The m values of m sub j, there will be four values for three halves, three halves to minus three halves. For one half, it's plus and minus one half. So notice for L equals one, there's two L plus one or three states for m sub L, one, zero, and minus one. For m sub j, there's two times two L plus one or six total states, even though the plus and minus one half are duplicates. For L equals two, it's two plus one half, two minus one half, three halves and five halves. Six values of m sub j there, six, four values of m sub j there, 10 total. Two times two times two plus one, two times five, 10 total states. So this is the basics of spin orbit coupling. We have our orbital angular momentum operators and eigenvalues, our spin angular momentum operators and eigenvalues. Those two combine due to spin orbit coupling to give us a total angular momentum operators and eigenvalues. We have a, the value J going from L plus S to L minus S, the value M sub J going from minus J up to J. For an electron, this is quite simple because M sub S can only equal plus or minus one half, S is only equal to one half, and the values of L are restricted such that we only get two possible values of J for a given, a maximum of two possible values of J for a given electron in a given atomic orbital of a certain orbital angular momentum.